Hi there, my name is Sam of Core Yoga and today I'm going to take you through a physical vinyasa flow practice that focuses not only on the strength within the practice but also the softness. And to find this balance of softness and strength, we're going to be really mindful of the breath. So it is my intention that we access and deepen the breath within our body, allowing us to draw the much needed oxygen deep into the body to allow the body to function, to allow the body to stay strong. We'll work with directional breathing, breathing into specific parts of the body and allowing us to use that breath to retain our focus, to be inward and to find a little additional length within the body, a little additional depth within the pose. For this practice right at the end, you'll need either a yoga strap or you can just use a tie or a skipping rope or a towel. Um, we'll just need to hook it over the foot uh, at the end of the practice. But until then, we're gonna come sit at our mat and um, just spend a short moment just arriving into the space. So find yourself in a comfortable seat. So you don't have to sit cross-legged. I like sitting cross-legged. Some people don't like sitting cross-legged. So just find a seat that feels comfortable for you. And just close off your eyes and allow both the body and the and the mind to arrive into the space between the four corners of your mat. So making a physical intention, a mental intention to let go of what's been going on in your day so far and what you have left to come. Moving our attention more inward so we can tune into, feel and be with the more subtle sensations within the body and the mind. So we start with our physical body and just be aware of how that's feeling today. And every time you notice a part of the body that gives you a negative sensation, so tightness or tension or soreness, look for something good as well. We might have to delve deep, but it's there. And then this is going to be really hard, but for the moment, try not to change your pattern of breath. So just be an observer of your breath. Notice the breath come, notice the breath go. Feel how the in-breath makes you feel. Feel how the out-breath makes you feel. Notice where the breath travels to. Notice the depth of the breath, the balance of the breath. And then tune in to the chapter of your mind and just observe it for a moment. Just notice the speed, the sense of that chatter. And acknowledge the movement of the thoughts through the mind before we allow them to soften out into the distance. So like there, a movie playing in the next room. Can't really hear. We can let go of them. And then from here, take a big breath in. 
And then as you exhale, just make your way into a child's pose. So bringing your hands underneath your shoulders, your knees underneath your hips, and bringing the big toes to me. So slowly set the hips back as low as your body will allow. So for some, they won't go all the way to the heels and you might want to plop, pop a cushion underneath your heels, in between your heels and your bum. And for others, the body will allow them to come a little further. And then just allow the head to settle. So the knees are around about shoulder distance apart. But if you really like those knees to be wider or narrower, feel free. Allow the head to soften towards the floor or a cushion or a pillow. And then just take a few moments as we get used to this new position. So when we arrive in our inner space, our body, our muscles respond to the movement of our bones. And then after we've been in that space for a bit of time, the connective tissue, particularly the myofascia that runs through and around all of these muscles responds also. It just takes a little longer than the muscles. So we're just letting the body be completely heavy for now while we start to access the breath into three key spaces in the body. So feel your lower belly, the space just below the belly button. And as you take your next inhalation breath, fill that space. Starting to bring control to the breath as you exhale, let it go. So three rounds of breath here into the belly. And exhale to let it go. The belly is soft right now, inhale to belly. And exhale to release. And draw your attention to your rib cage and inhale wide into the rib cage. And exhale, let it go. Now the belly is holding a little tighter. Inhale into the rib cage. And exhale to release. One more wide into the ribs. And exhale to soften. And then draw your attention to the front of your chest, the space between the armpits, and inhale into that space. And then exhale, let it go. And inhale into the front of the chest. And exhale to release. And one more breath here. And exhale, feel how the body softens on the out breath. Then inhale, come to all fours. This time we're going to come into a melting heart. Extend your hands out to the far corners of the mat. Keep the knees stacked underneath the hips and allow the chest to travel towards the floor. And so from here you can bring your forehead, your nose or your chin to the earth, whatever feels right for you. And then take a breath into the front of your chest, so the last space we were breathing. And here we're accessing a stretch through the front of that chest, so it's helpful for us to direct our breath here. So we're breathing into the space between the armpits, through the heart space at the front of the body. And as we exhale, we're allowing the body to soften a little deeper into the pose. So once again, we've come to the pose. We've allowed the muscles to stretch until they stop. And then we've stopped right there and we're breathing into the heart space to allow the connective tissue, particularly the fascia, to catch up. One more breath here. And then as you exhale, slowly walk your hands back towards your shoulders, tuck under your toes, and lift up your hips. Come into a downward facing dog. And then first off, just start to walk out your dog. So bending alternate knees. We've been seated and in child's pose for the first few minutes of the class. And now we're starting to bring movement into the body. So be a bit mindful of that. Coming into stillness in your down dog. It does not have to be yet your deepest variation of down dog. Just close off your eyes and feel the floor and 
underneath your hands and your feet. And with a little attention, drawing the hip, uh, sorry, the sit bones a little higher to the sky. Then soften the belly. You're safe to do that here. As you inhale, draw the breath into that belly space. And as you exhale, feel the navel hug back towards the spine and keep it there. Then inhale into the ribs. Feel the ribs grow wide. Feel you stretching those intercostals. Exhale, let it go. And then inhale once again into that chest space between the armpits. And as you exhale, make sure the back of the neck is released of tension. Take one more inhalation breath into the rib cage. And then exhale, come forward to a high plank. In and out of this, inhale, lift the hips. Downward facing dog. And exhale, high plank. So we're now inhaling into the rib cage, allowing us to keep that lower belly a little active to support us as we travel into this plank. Next time you come up, stay there. Bend your right knee, turn your left foot 45 degrees and bring the left heel to the floor. And then from there, push both hands evenly. Slowly turn the chest towards the left as you ground the left heel towards the floor. Then a breath into the left hip. And then let it go. Then a breath into the left side of the rib cage. And then let it go. And then a breath under the left armpit. And then let it go as you come back to down dog. Inhale, travel forwards to a high plank and exhale, lower all the way to the floor. Just a rest bind in sphinx pose in between. So bring the elbows to the um, floor underneath the shoulders and the hands out in front of you. If this hurts your lower back, just bring the elbows a little further away from your shoulders. Press the floor away from you, close your eyes, breathe into the front of your um, chest space. And as you exhale, just soften the shoulders a little. So as we travel through this practice, we're focusing on breath. We're accessing and deepening the breath. And we're allowing the breath to travel, or we're directing the breath into specific spaces to help us with our practice. And then more anatomically, we're working at strengthening the muscles on the back side of the body. So from the back of the shoulders to the heels, whilst we lengthen the muscles that connect to the superficial front line of fascia along the front of the body. So we're lengthening out the space from the tops of our feet, through the front of our legs, through the front of our belly, our torso, up to our throat, and just into the back of the skull. As you exhale, let that go. Come back to downward facing dog. So just giving the arms a little bit of respite there. I know too much time in downward facing dog can be challenging on the shoulders, on the arms. So now I'm going to bend the left knee deeply and take the right heel towards the floor. It doesn't have to touch. But it's more likely to touch as you twist your torso towards the right. It helps to close your eyes here. Take a breath into the right hip. Now I know your lungs are not there. Exhale, let it go. But we can direct the attention there. Left rib cage. No right rib cage. And let it go. And then right armpit. And then let it go as you come back to downward facing dog. Take a breath in. And as you exhale, slowly walk your feet towards your hands. Allow your body to soften into a forward fold. And just grab your elbows. Release the tension in the back of the neck. And just stay here for a moment once again to allow the muscles and then the connective tissue, the fascia, to respond to this position. Then we use our breath to help us a little more. 
So right now you're safe to breathe into your belly. Inhale into the belly space. And exhale, feel the belly draw back towards the spine. Keep it there. Inhale into the ribcage. And then exhale, let that go. And then inhale into the front of the chest. And exhale as you release the hands by your side. Inhale, press the feet into the floor. Reach your hands up to the sky and gaze to the thumbs. And exhale, bring the palms together in the heart space. So take a couple of moments to feel now your standing posture. If this is the first time you've worked with directional breathing, you might notice that it feels a little bizarre. That it doesn't seem logical to breathe into a hip space when actually it's our lungs that take in the oxygen. But the more you practice this visualization of breathing into spaces, the more you'll feel the result of that sensation. So whilst of course we still breathe into our lungs, we are able to find some more space in those particular parts of the body that we draw the oxygen towards. Take a breath in here, into the belly space, and then as you exhale, allow that navel to draw back towards the spine. Then inhale into your ribcage. And exhale, soften that. Then inhale into your chest space. And exhale. We'll travel through our sun salutes as we really start to access muscles in the back of the chain, lengthen muscles in the front of the chain. And move that breath around the body. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky. Open the eyes and look up. Exhale, soften the knees and fold forwards. Half salutation, two of these. The inhale, halfway you lift, open the chest. Exhale, forward fold, release the back of the neck. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky and look up. And exhale, palms together in the heart space. Inhale, reach up, look up. Exhale, soften the knees and fold. Inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky. And exhale, palms together. Sura Namaskar A. Inhale, reach the hands up, look up. Exhale, soften the knees and fold. The same way to get there, inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, hands down and step back to plank. One inhalation breath into your rib cage in plank. Then exhale for this round, knees, thighs, and belly to the floor, tuck the chin. Inhale into a baby cobra, squeeze your bum a little, and exhale, push the floor away from you, downward facing dog. Soften the belly, inhale into that space. Feel the belly draw back to the spine as you exhale. Then keep that there, inhale wide into the rib cage. And exhale, soften the back of the neck. And then inhale to the front of the chest. And then exhale, release the tension in the jaw. Inhale, take your gaze to your thumbs. Then exhale, bend your knees and step your feet forward to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway you lift, and exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky and look up. And exhale, palms together in the heart space. Into a lunge salutation, inhale, reach the hands up, look up. Exhale, soften the knees and fold. Inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, right leg back, right knee to the floor. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky and look up. Exhale, hands down, step back to downward facing dog. Inhale, travel the shoulders forward to your high plank. Exhale, knees, thighs and belly. This time take the hands wide, fingertips to the floor. Inhale as you open into a wide-armed cobra. 
Exhale, hands back, downward facing dog. Inhale, raise the right leg to the sky, look to the right thumb. Exhale, step the right foot forward, drop the left knee. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky. Exhale, hands down, left foot to join the right. Inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach the hands up and look up. Interlace the fingers as you exhale, bring the hands behind the skull. Inhale into the heart space, press the skull into the hands and exhale, hold it here. So maintaining the breath right for the moment to the upper chest. Feeling that drawing back of the skull into the hands and that resisting of the hands into the skull. Feeling a sensation of activation of the muscles in the back of the neck. As you exhale, release that, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, left foot back, left knee down. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky. Exhale, interlace the hands back of the skull, chin is tucked. And then inhale, press the skull into the hands and open up through that chest. So keeping the belly nicely drawn in, it's nice to breathe into the upper chest here so we can find a little more space through this superficial front line. Take one more breath and as you exhale, bring the hands to the mat, step the right foot back, downward facing dog. Inhale, high plank. Exhale, knees, thighs and belly, hands wide, fingertips to the floor, inhale, wide, arms, cobra. Exhale, hands down, down, facing dog. Inhale, raise the left leg, look to the left thumb. Exhale, set the left foot forward, drop the right knee. Inhale, into your low lunge. Exhale, tuck the chin, interlace the hands behind the skull. Inhale, open through that chest. And exhale, hold it here. So this same element of resistance as the back of the skull presses into the hands and the hands resist that pressure, bringing attention to the muscles in the back of the neck. As you exhale, release hands to the floor and step your right foot forward. Inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach your hands to the sky. And exhale, bend your right elbow and bring your right hand in between the shoulder blades. And then your left hand onto the right elbow. Press the feet into the floor, keep the belly drawing back towards the spine. Inhale into the front of that chest. And exhale, now the back of the skull presses into the forearm. But we're really mindful not to arch through the back here. We're really mindful to keep the ribs drawing towards the hips to get the length through the front of the body. Now as you exhale, let it go, fold forwards. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, right leg steps back, right knee stays lifted. Inhale, push the floor away from you. High lunge, squeeze your right glute. Exhale, hands down, plank. Inhale into the rib cage here. Exhale, lower all the way to the floor. This time, point the feet, bring the hands behind you. Palms face the floor. Just a breath here to prepare. And then inhale, raise the head, the chest, and reach the fingertips back. Stay here and feel the back of that skull. Imagine you have the hands connected to the back of that skull and you're pushing the back of that skull into the hands and the hands are resisting. And then here, not only are you feeling the muscles in the lower part of the back, but you're feeling the muscles in the upper part of the back and the back of the neck. As you exhale, let it all go. Downward facing dog. Inhale, raise the right leg to the sky and look to the right thumb. Exhale, right foot steps forward, squeeze your inner thighs, inhale into your high lunge, squeeze your left butt cheek here. Exhale, hands down, 
Left foot steps forward and fold. Inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach the hands up and look up. And exhale, tuck the chin, bend the left elbow, bring the left hand between the shoulder blades. Mindful here that we haven't got into this position by arching through our back. That we've got into this position by tucking the chin. And then as we inhale, we're pressing the skull into the forearm to open up through the chest rather than to arch the back. Then we're feeling this sense that the muscles in the back of the body are helping us create length in the muscles in the front of the body. As you exhale, release that, hands to the floor. Then inhale, hands to your shins, halfway lift. Exhale, hands down, left foot steps back. Inhale into your high lunge, squeeze your left butt cheek. Bend your left elbow and bring your hand back where it was. And then inhale, press into that forearm as you open through the chest. So if you'd like to take a bind here, feel free. But no, that's not the mission. So you can as easily keep this right hand on the left elbow, feeling that sense of control, the opening of the chest rather than the arching of the back. So keeping these ribs knitted towards the hip points. As you exhale, let it go, step back to plank. Rib cage take an inhalation. Exhale all the way to the floor. Inhale, raise your head and your chest, stay here. So this is half a locust. My palms are facing down because I feel that better in my shoulders. Then squeeze the bum to lift the legs. But make the bum work to lift those legs. Locust. Now we've added the glutes, the hamstrings, the calf muscles. Exhale, let it all go. Downward facing dog. Inhale, raise your left leg to the sky, look to your thumb. Exhale, step the left foot forward. Inhale, find your high lunge. Squeeze that right butt cheek. Bend the right elbow, tuck the chin. Inhale, getting into this pose by pressing the head into the forearm rather than arching the back. So we're keeping this butt cheek working so that we keep this pelvis stable. So we can find the length in the front of the body whilst maintaining a stable and secure posture. As we exhale, release it. Right foot steps forward and fold. Inhale, halfway you lift. And exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky. And exhale, palms together. Inhale, Utkatasana, chair pose. Exhale, hold it here. Inhale into the belly space. Exhale, draw the belly back. Inhale into the rib cage. Exhale, release the shoulders a little. Inhale into the front of your chest. And then exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, hands to the floor and step back to plank. Inhale and plank. Exhale to the floor. One breath, locust. Inhale. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, raise the right leg to the sky. Bend the right knee as you exhale, lift the right knee and hip towards the sky. Keep your shoulders as best you can, parallel with the mat. Now feel that sense of lift through um, the right side. And then breathe into the right side of your rib cage. As you exhale, derotate, set the right foot to the center of the mat, ground the back foot, warrior two. So your gaze to those right fingertips. Take a breath in, squeeze your left butt cheek. As you exhale, relax the shoulders. 
And then inhale, straighten both legs, reach your hands high, gaze up. Interlace your hands, tuck your chin, bring the hands behind your skull. Inhale, press the skull into the hands and the hands back. And exhale, bend that right knee again. Now inhale, guide your right elbow up and your left elbow down. And exhale, hold it here. Your gaze wherever feels comfortable. Inhale now into the right side of your hip. And exhale, hold it here. Then inhale, right side of your rib cage. And exhale, hold it. And then inhale into the right armpit. And exhale. And then inhale, warrior two. Exhale, windmill the hands. Set the right foot back. Exhale, lower all the way to the floor. Inhale into locust. Exhale, downward facing dog. Nice. Inhale, raise the left leg to the sky. And exhale, bend that left knee and open that left hip up. So just stabilize those arms, push the floor away from you evenly, and try and get that twist from the hips rather than from the shoulders. And then breathe into the left side of your rib cage. And then exhale, step the foot to the center of the mat, ground the back foot, warrior two. So take a moment, squeeze the right butt cheek. It just helps to align the pelvis. The gaze to the left fingers. Feel that sense of breath in the body. And then inhale, straighten your left leg, reach the hands high. Exhale, tuck the chin and bring the hands behind your skull. Inhale, press the skull open through the chest. And then exhale, bend that left knee. Inhale, lift the left elbow up, draw the right arm down, take the gaze where it feels good. Then inhale into the left hip. And exhale. Inhale into the left side of the rib cage. And exhale. Inhale into the left armpit. And exhale. Then inhale back to warrior two. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step back all the way down to the mat. Inhale into the look. Exhale, hands down, downward facing dog. Inhale, bend the knees, look to the thumbs. Exhale, step or jump to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, utkatasana chair. And exhale, palms together. Then bring your feet together, your knees together. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, push the floor away from you, lift your right leg. And then inhale, hook the right leg over the left. Exhale, come all the way up. And then inhale to sit. Exhale, lifting the left leg, hooking the left ankle. And then sitting back and down. Breathing through the movement. Good. Inhale into your squat. Exhale to lift. Inhale once you've crossed the legs. And exhale to return. Inhale Utkatasana. Exhale lift and hook left leg. Inhale into your Utkatasana. Exhale release. Inhale reach the hands high. Exhale, soften the knees and fold. Inhale, halfway you lift. Exhale, hands down, step back to plank. Inhale, in plank. Then exhale, all the way to the floor. Locust building spinal strength. Inhale, to lift. Exhale, down the dog. Inhale, raise the right leg. And exhale, take that scorpion dog. Inhale into the right side of the body. And then exhale, do rotate right foot back to the center. Inhale, warrior two. 
Exhale, gaze to the right thumb. Inhale, reverse your warrior. Exhale, hold it here. Inhale, warrior two. Exhale, straighten the right leg. Inhale, reach your hands forward, right hand to the shin, left hand to the sky. And then exhale, flip that left hand and bring it behind you to your lower back. And then just allow it to rest here. And then stabilizing in your triangle. Bring your left hand to your left hip and inhale, breathe into that space. And then exhale, let it go. Move your left hand to the rib cage. Inhale into that space. And exhale, let it go. Move your left hand to the left chest. Inhale into that space. And exhale, let it go. Inhale, back to warrior two. Exhale, windmill the hands. Step back and lower to the floor. Inhale into locust. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, left leg high. Exhale, open up that left hip. Inhale into the left side of your body. And exhale, left foot to the center of the mat. Inhale, move your right foot, warrior two. And exhale, gaze to the left fingers. Inhale, reverse the warrior, and exhale, hold it here. Inhale, warrior two, and exhale, straighten the left leg and come into triangle. And flip the palm, bringing your hand to your lower back. Just stabilize for a moment in your triangle. Gaze to whatever feels right for your neck. And then bring the right hand to your right hip. Inhale into that space. And exhale. Move the hand to your rib cage. Inhale into the rib cage. And exhale, let it go. Move the right hand to your right chest and inhale here. And exhale, release. Inhale, bend the knee, come back to warrior two. Exhale, wimble the hands and step back, lower to the floor. Inhale, come into your locust. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, a breath here. Exhale, bend the knees, look to the thumb, step or float the feet to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway in it. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky. And exhale, palms together in the heart space. So from here, close off the eyes and bring your attention to that space in the back of the skull. Then feel the back of the skull. Draw a little bit back and a little bit up. So that we bring that skull to sit nicely on the shoulders rather than how the skull tends to move forward when we spend much time on devices and at laptops and at computers. And then feel these muscles in the back of the neck. From here, bring your hands by your side, open your eyes. As you inhale, press the left foot into the floor and raise the right foot. And just come round and grab that right foot. So you can either hold this right foot with your strap or your towel, with your right hand on the outside of the foot, or with your right hand on the inside of the foot. And when you stabilize into that space, squeeze the bum and pull the belly in, and bring your left hand by your side, breathe into the front of your chest, and then exhale, hold it here. Then inhale, reach the left hand to the sky, as you exhale, push back in your right heel, foot, pushing your right foot towards the back of your mat and reaching your left hand towards the front of your mat. So keep that sense of engagement through whole body, knowing wobbling is totally fine here. And breathe into the front of that chest. 
As you exhale, hold it here, stabilize. One more breath, inhaling. And then exhale, release that right foot slowly. Bring the right foot to the back of the mat. Inhale, squeeze the right butt cheek, high lunge. Exhale, bring the hands behind your back. Either interlace your hands or keep them apart. And inhale, open through the chest. Exhale, push back in the back heel. Take the crown of the head a little further forward. Take one breath in this variation of humble warrior. And then exhale, bring the hands to the floor. Drop the right knee. And then heel toe the left foot out to the side. So your hands are underneath your shoulders as though you're doing plank. And just assess if you have any pain in the front of the left hip here. And if you do, maybe externally rotate that foot a little more. Or maybe roll onto the outer edge of the foot and drop the knee out. And if none of that helps, come up a little higher. Don't put strain through the front of this left hip. Then tuck under the back toe and take the back knee back until the body says, you know, that feels like enough. Now as you inhale, push the floor away from you with your hands. And as you exhale, squeeze your inner thighs. Then inhale into the belly space here. And exhale, let it go, drop the chest a little lower. Then inhale into the rib cage. And exhale, let it go, drop the chest a little lower. And then inhale into the front of the chest. And then exhale, let it go. If you feel like the elbows can easily come to the floor, bring them to the floor. If the hands are still on the floor, keep the hands still on the floor. Close off your eyes, keep the back of the neck long. Imagine the hands behind the back of the skull. As you draw that back of skull a little bit up towards the sky. Now here, breathe wide into the rib cage. Feel the ribs widen as you take the breath in. And feel the ribs and the torso soften towards the floor as you breathe out. Then inhale, bring your right elbow to the floor and turn your hand towards your left foot. Or bring your right hand to the floor and turn your torso towards your left foot. Either way, take your left hand to the left knee, guide the left foot onto the outer edge, and as you exhale, slowly twist. Inhale the breath into the belly space, and exhale, feel it drawing towards the spine. Then inhale the breath into the rib cage, and exhale, let it go. And inhale the breath into the front of the chest, and exhale to release. Then inhale, come all the way back to the center. Just tuck the right toe, draw the right knee in a little way. Use your left hand on your left knee and come up to a standing. So two options here, three options. Hands behind you, palms about beach ball distance apart, squeezing a beach ball. Hands interlaced drawing those hands towards the back of the foot mat. Or bending your right knee and taking both hands behind the right foot. Wherever feels right for your body is the right place to be. Squeeze the right glute and inhale into the front of that chest. Keep the belly drawing back. Inhale, feel that opening by using the breath and no bending at that spine. Keep pushing the right foot into the hands if your knees are bent, or pushing the right foot into the floor if your um, foot's on the floor. And then as you exhale, release it, bring the hands to the floor, downward facing dog. Inhale, bend the knees, look to the thumbs, and then exhale, step or float to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway you lift, and exhale, forward fold. Inhale, reach the hands to the sky and look up. And exhale, palms together in the heart space. So from here, once again, feel that sense of grounding in the floor. As you squeeze your right glute, you can bend that left knee. You might not be able to reach the foot, and that's okay. If you can't reach the foot, bring something around the foot, or take 
a little bend in the pose to get the flip. And then either keep the arm here or bring the arm to the inner edge of the foot. That just creates more opening through the front of the shoulder, but some shoulders are a little tight and that becomes inaccessible. So find what's right for your body, squeeze the bum, draw the rib cage towards the hips. Breathe into the front of the chest as you reach the right hand to the sky. And then as you exhale, push the left foot into the hand and resist that foot with the hand. So you're slowly traveling forwards, but only as far as your body wants to go today. Some days I like to go super deep into this pose. Other days I find my body a little bit restricted. And so therefore I go a little less deep. It's not about the picture. It's not about the shape. As you exhale, bend the right knee, release the left foot, bring the left foot to the floor. Inhale into your high lunge. Exhale, hands behind you, either grab an imaginary ball or interlace those fingers. As you exhale, push back in the back heel and take the body over that front thigh. So already you can assess whether the front of this right hip doesn't feel good. And if it doesn't feel good, then you know you're gonna to have to take that foot out a little wider or maybe externally rotate it as you come to the floor or maybe push onto the outer edge. Drop the left knee, heel, toe, the right foot, right to the outer edge of the mat. And I like to externally rotate it a little bit. Bring the hands underneath the shoulders as though you're doing plank. And then just take a moment here. Assess the front of this right hip and make an adaptation if that doesn't feel nice. What else I like to do sometimes is put a blanket right underneath my, um, in between my thigh and my belly. And that helps to create some space also. Then when you've been here for a moment or three, tuck under that back toe, push back in the back heel. Push the floor away from you with your hands and then squeeze the inner thigh. So keep the stability here. Then we can release the belly for a moment, inhale into that space. And then exhale, feel the belly draw back towards the spine. Then inhale into the rib cage. And then exhale, come a little lower. And then inhale into the chest. And exhale, take it a little further. So only if you can get both elbows to the floor do you bring the elbows to the floor. And sometimes you'll get there on one side and not the other side. What you don't want to do is become competitive about this and try and drive those elbows to the floor because there may be a whole heap of reasons why those elbows don't reach the floor. And invariably it's skeletal variation, like your skeleton is slightly different to my skeleton, and my skeleton allows my body to be here and another skeleton not. So right now as we rest here, we're still active in this pose, and we're breathing wide into the rib cage so we can maintain the stability around the pelvis. And then either with the elbow on the floor or the hand on the floor, bring your right hand to your right knee. And as you exhale, you're going to guide that right knee away from you and twist and open through the chest. You're going to take one breath into the belly. And as you exhale, you draw that belly back towards the spine. That stabilizes you in that pelvis. Then breathe wide into the rib cage. And then exhale it. And then breathe wide into the front of the chest. And exhale. And then inhale back to the center. Keep the feet, uh, sorry, tuck the left toes under and draw the left knee a little further forward. And then right hand to the right knee to come up. So your three options here is you hold an imaginary ball behind your back. You interlace your fingers behind your back. Or you bend your left knee and you bring your hands behind your foot. Wherever you are, you squeeze your left glute. You pull your navel in and you try not to let these ribs flare towards the sky. You're breathing into the front of your chest. And you're exhaling to let it go. You're inhaling front of chest. And exhaling to release. Inhaling one more here, and 
And as you exhale, you're nice and slow, you're nice and controlled. Tucking under the back toe and stepping the right foot back to downward facing dog. Take a breath in in your down dog. And then bend the knees as you exhale, look to the thumbs. We're going to come through to a seated place, so find your way into a comfortable seat. And then from here in this comfortable seat, this is where we're going to take our strap, our towel, our skipping rope, whatever it might be. Come lie down on your back. And from here, just take a few moments to allow the spine to settle. And then extend your right leg to the sky. Take your right, your strap around the mid part of your foot. So not around the arch, not that that's wrong, but this just helps us access and stretch through the back of the body. So we've spent the majority of the practice today activating muscles in the back of the chain to lengthen muscles in the front of the chain. So these last few poses are allowing us to stretch out those muscles that we have worked in this practice. So again, bring physical balance into the body. Of course, the majority of our practice, we've been focused on feeding the breath into different parts of the body, allowing us to access and deepen our breath. Extend your left leg straight out in front of you and press the left heel gently into the floor. As you do so, draw the right heel a little higher to the sky and the right toes draw towards the shin. And just feel where you feel that in your body. And if you feel it in the back of the knee, just soften the knee a little. So we want to feel and access the stretch either through the calf or through the hamstring. Or like me, I'm feeling it in both but not through the back of the knee. There's no real muscle here, it's just mainly ligament and tendon, and we don't want to apply too much force to stretching those uh, particular tissues. Bring the strap into your left hand and keep pushing the heel away from you. As you exhale, take your right hand out to the side, slowly guide your right leg across to the left. So this is starting to access into the glutes, those muscles that have worked really hard to stabilize us as we lengthen the muscles in the front of the chain through that superficial front line of fascia. Our gaze is now over the right elbow. And we can close our eyes right now and take the weight of the leg now into our right left hand. So see if you can release a little bit of the tension in the muscles on this right leg. You'll notice that maybe your quads are engaged, maybe your outer hip is engaged, and that's because it's just protecting you from going too far. And we're going to spend five more rounds of breath here, and we're going to direct our breath into the top right segment of our chest. And as we do that, we're going to allow, as we exhale, the body to soften and settle a little. The leg may or may not touch the floor, that's not its destination. Focusing on that breath, inhaling into the right side of the chest, and exhaling to let it go. And one more breath here. As you exhale, slowly guide that leg back to the center. Bend your left knee and bring your right ankle to your left thigh. So it's like you're about to do a thread the needle. But we're not going to quite get to thread the needle. We're going to draw the left knee in as far as it goes and just rock over onto our left and bring the left hand onto our right foot and extend the right hand back to exactly where it was. And now we're just accessing a little bit more into this outer hip space because I know I'm tight in my hamstrings. I feel it into my outer hamstring. You might also feel it around the uh, outer edge of the uh, hips. If you feel it in the front of the right hip, take your uh, knees a little further away from you. So then you create space here. So we want to stretch and lengthen the outer side of the joint. And then slowly 
bring yourself back to the center. And we'll take those same stretches on the other side. So you're going to bring your strap around your left foot, extend the left leg to the sky, and draw the toes towards the shin. We'll just settle here for a moment. So when we straighten this right leg, it just becomes more intense. So we're just allowing the body just to settle, like I've been saying a few times through the practice. We're allowing the muscle to respond to the movement, and then we're allowing the fascia to catch up. So the fascia doesn't necessarily stretch at the same speed as the muscle. And so when we're lengthening out a muscle, we need to give it time so that it lengthens. And then when you feel that it's kind of settling and it goes a little further, that's because that connective tissue is catching up with it. Extend the right leg away from you. Gently press the right heel into the floor and the left heel towards the sky. Again, if that hurts behind the knee, just bend the knee. Feel that sense of length, that stretch. And notice it might be different from side to side. You might feel it in your calf on one leg and your hamstring on the other. All of this is just feedback. Feedback on where we're carrying tension and tightness in the body. Feedback on where we feel sensation in the body. And then take the strap into the right hand, the left hand out to the side. Keep pushing the left heel away from you as you arrive into this twist. So we're really guiding that left leg away and then we can hold the weight of the leg with the right arm. So right arm is still working, but we're feeling a sense of letting go in the left leg as we slowly release the tension in the muscles of the left side. And then we're going to direct our breath to the left side of our chest. And every time we breathe out, we let the body soften and settle just a little bit more. And everybody is structured differently. So listen to your body. Feel and respond to sensations in your body. Don't allow your body to feel pain. A little discomfort is fine, but pain makes you say, ow, that's not fine. Slowly come back to the center. Bend your right knee and bring your left ankle to your right thigh. Draw the right knee towards you and just rock to the right. So bring your right hand onto your right foot your left hand back where it was and the left gaze back where it was. And remember that if you're feeling this in the front of the hip, you just take your knees further away from you. Your hand doesn't bind, but that's okay. So just feel what feels right for your body. And now take that breath into the left outer hip. Or to wherever you feel sensation and stretch in this pose. And then slowly find your way back to the center. Hug both knees in towards your chest. Close off your eyes and take a little rock from side to side. Our next pose is Shavasana. Feel free if your lower back is sore to keep your knees bent and bring your feet mat distance apart. Or if the body enjoys being flat, extend your legs out in front of you, but you've got space. Take them nice and mat distance apart. And bring the hands out where you feel comfortable. Turn the palms up to face the sky. 
Take a deep breath and now feel the sensation of that breath. Reach the far ends of your toes and your fingertips, the back of the skull. And as you exhale, just allow the body to settle. Now, take all control out of the breath. Allow the breath to flow. Allow the mind to watch the breath without control, without judgment. As it comes and goes, Shavasana. And before you bring any physical movement back into the body, and just take a moment to tune into that physical body. To watch the breath as it comes and as it goes, perhaps now with a little more ease and fluidity than at the beginning of the practice. And then just take a moment to notice the mind and the content and the pace of the thoughts in that mind. Slowly bring movement to your fingers and your toes and draw your knees in towards your chest. Take your time, find your way up to a comfortable seat. Keeping the eyes closed if you can. And sealing off the practice as we bring the palms together in the heart space. Taking a full breath and exhaling to bow the head. Namaste.